Welcome to World Med School. Uh, I'm Larry Gostin. I'm a distinguished university professor at Georgetown University in Washington, DC. I'm co-faculty director of the O'Neill Institute for National and Global Health Law. And I'm, I also direct um, the World Health Organization Center on Global Health Law. I'm gonna talk about the ongoing uh, MPOX um, epidemic that's taking place in Africa um, and which uh, both the World Health Organization and the Africa uh, CDC um, have declared global health emergencies as well as regional emergencies. It's the first time ever that there have been concurrent um, regional and uh, global emergencies taking place. Um, so let me start um, with the fact that uh, MPOX has been endemic um, in the Democratic Republic of Congo um, for many years. Um, and during that time, um, there's been um, a real uh, rising tide of MPOX um, in that country. Um, uh, the DRC is a, is a country uh, and particularly Kivu province that has experienced a long uh, hardship, um, colonialization, exploitation, um, and also is uh, has enormous um, social upheaval, um, uh, political instability, and um, real armed violence. Um, in fact, I've got a um, something on my um, iPhone um, that Tedros, the director general of WHO, once sent me of WHO health workers under attack uh, during um, uh, a, an Ebola uh, response effort. Um, so this has been a deeply troubling and an intractable problem um, in uh, the DRC for quite some time. Um, I take some pains in saying this um, because during all that time, uh, the international community has turned a blind eye um, to all of the disease and to the suffering. Uh, and uh, this uh, is, in my view, um, an unconscionable um, uh, form of neglect, only one of many inequities um, around the world. Um, but in 2002, um, uh, MPOX um, began to spread um, in Europe, um, North America, and other parts of the world, over 100 countries in a multi-country outbreak. Um, it was only then that the World Health Organization declare, declared a public health emergency of international concern, which is the highest alert level under the international health regulations of um, 2005. Um, since that time, uh, MPOX has um, smoldered in the DRC um, and it's become, um, we think, um, more uh, concerning, more transmissible um, and more um, uh, serious, particularly for children. Um, the important thing is, is that uh, the DRC outbreak has now spread um, to 12 countries, um, uh, neighboring countries in Africa. Um, and that spurred the uh, Africa CDC um, to declare a public health emergency of continental security. And this is the first time the Africa CDC has declared um, such a uh, regional emergency uh, and that uh, the African CDC and the uh, African Union uh, and African leaders are now um, engaged in a, uh, a, a major response uh, to um, MPOX in the area. Uh, the, the very day after um, the Africa CDC declared the regional emergency, um, uh, the emergency committee of, of the Inter of the World Health Organization met um, and they recommended to Dr. Tedros 
um, that he declare a public health emergency of international concern. Um, and he did that the very um, next day after the um, Africa CDC declared its regional emergency. Um, and very recently, um, Tejos has put out a series of temporary recommendations and also extended the time period until 2025 for standing recommendations. Um, these recommendations um, include um, major investments um, in the area, um, the delivery of vaccinations, um, and uh, very importantly, urging all countries around the world not to uh, target uh, those affected countries with discriminatory travel and trade restrictions. Um, you may recall that this has been a huge problem under the international health regulations um, during COVID-19, for example, um, when South Africa was a really um, excellent model global health citizen um, by immediately reporting the Omicron uh, variant, as well as um, sequencing its genome and transparently um, sharing that with uh, WHO and all related countries. Um, as a result, um, South Africa was punished um, with targeted discriminatory um, travel restrictions uh, against uh, all of Southern Africa at the time. Um, this is exactly the wrong thing to happen because it creates a disincentive for open sharing. So where are we now um, with the MPOX? Um, uh, epidemic uh, in Africa. Well, first of all, there's been a 160% rise in cases um, uh, uh, from last time this year. Um, and most of the cases that have been reported are among children, um, which is highly concerning. Uh, the epidemiology um, appears to be um, transmission primarily um, in uh, households, um, uh, in uh, uh, sexual uh, transmission, particularly um, uh, men who have sex with men, but not exclusively. It appears to be efficiently um, transmitted um, uh, sexually. Um, we've since uh, had a case in Europe reported from Sweden, um, as well as one in Pakistan. Uh, so the question is, is um, what is the present situation and what do we what do we do now? Um, in the present situation, um, Africa, as I've said, um, has been starved of attention uh, and resources, but particularly starved of needed vaccinations, diagnostics, laboratory equipment, and other medical tools that are necessary. Um, that could bring uh, the MPOX uh, epidemic uh, to a, an end. Um, but if you look at a world map of where um, uh, MPOX vaccines exist and where there actually is uh, MPOX circulating, you see a huge mismatch. And I'm really concerned that we're gonna make the same mistakes that we made during COVID-19. During COVID-19, as you'll recall, um, there were cavernous um, disparities between vaccination rates in the world's high-income countries and low-income countries. And high-income countries like the United States, uh, European countries, um, the UK, um, and elsewhere um, hoarded um, their vaccines and created um, supply scarcities around the world. Um, and the same thing is happening again. Uh, the frontline um, vaccination um, uh, supplies um, are almost exclusively in high-income countries. Um, uh, Danis, a Danish manufacturer um, is the uh, major manufacturer of the Genios um, vaccine, which is the preferred vaccine. Um, there are doses um, held 
in the United States, um, the European Union, and other uh, European countries. Um, there's also a second vaccine that's approved um, uh, and is also a frontline vaccine um, in Japan. But the Africa CDC um, uh, uh, estimates that it will need 10 million doses of frontline vaccine supplies. At the same time, um, we can see from uh, uh, the donations that we're pitifully short. Um, the uh, European Union has a, an agreement with uh, 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 the Danish manufacturer um, and the Africa CDC to deliver 300,000 doses. Um, the United States has pledged 50,000 doses. All of those pale in comparison um, to the 10 million um, vaccines that are needed. The point is, is that if we invested now um, through vaccinations, through diagnostic testing, um, through laboratories, surveillance, trained health workers, and robust health system uh, responses, um, uh, the African uh, CDC, in partnership with WHO and uh, the international community, could rapidly bring this to a close. It's very clear in closing that uh, these inequities are unconscionable. And when the international health regulations were, was uh, fundamentally reformed in May 2024, um, due to the inequities of the COVID-19 pandemic, one of the most um, inspiring changes in the international health regulations was the inclusion of equity for the first time ever as a core principle. I was on the WHO um, IHR review committee, and I can tell you that th this is something we fought for hard. Um, countries pushed against it, but we got it done. And so now we need to deliver equity in the MPOX um, uh, uh, response. So in fairness um, to people of Africa where who are experiencing um, many diseases, but particularly MPOX, we need to bring this to a close. But beyond that, I think we ignore um, this outbreak at our peril um, because it affects the national interests in both high-income countries, middle-income countries, and low-income countries. Why? Um, now, certainly, MPOX is, doesn't have the pandemic potential that a highly uh, infectious um, respiratory disease does, such as um, SARS-CoV-2 or, or um, influenza. But nonetheless, it does have pandemic potential. Um, and in talking to uh, WHO, Africa CDC, and the US CDC, um, there's a real concern that if um, uh, this uh, clade uh, 1B uh, seeds itself uh, in uh, the in Europe um, that given a rapid um, transmission routes and given the the highly efficient sexual transmission um, and household transmission of uh, mpox um, we could see um, a major global event um, but it's within our power to respond now to respond, robustly um, with funding that's enduring and with equity and global solidarity. And that will benefit the entire world's population. Otherwise, it's only a matter of time when the next pandemic hits, whether it's MPOX, um, whether it's a SARS-like virus, whether it's influenza or another outbreak, um, we need to be prepared and we need to be prepared now.